Now let us talk about the pathogenesis of edema. First, what happens when there is an increased hydrostatic pressure? So whenever there is an increased hydrostatic pressure, it causes increase in outward driving force. So increase in the outward driving force which means seen in deep vein thrombosis or in congestive heart failure. It is mainly due to venous return, right? Next, what about the condition where you will see decreased plasma oncotic pressure of capillaries? So whenever that happens, it is responsible for decrease inward driving force. The main reason is from hypoproteinemia that causes decrease in the driving force. So hypoproteinemia is more commonly seen in the conditions like nephrotic syndrome, right? There will be more protein excretion from the kidneys in the nephrotic syndrome. Liver cirrhosis, in the liver cirrhosis, the synthesis of albumin by the liver decreases. There's a reason there will be hypoproteinemia in liver cirrhosis. Or maybe due to protein energy malnutrition, which is acquired in nature or in conditions like protein losing entropy. All the conditions which is associated with decrease in the protein synthesis, excretion of the protein, decrease in the intake of the protein, all leads to decreased plasma concentration of proteins leads to hypoproteinemia, causes edema. And next phenomena is lymphatic obstruction. What is the actual role of the lymphatic vessels and lymph? It clears off excess fluid which is present in the tissue compartment and take it back to the vascular compartment. That is the main role of uh, these lymphatic vessels. So whenever there is an impairment or pathology associated with this lymphatic vessels, there will be an impaired removal of the interstitial fluid by the lymphatics so there will be an excess in the interstitial fluid leads to the development of edema so this is the role of uh, lymphatics in the pathogenesis of edema next one will be an increased endothelial permeability you can see the endothelial layer over here right so the gaps between the endothelium is actually made up of tight junctions but Whenever there is an endothelial injury, what happens is the loss of endothelium in certain areas causes leakage of the fluid from the capillaries into the tissue spaces. Especially increased endothelial permeability is seen during angiogenesis or maybe in inflammation or maybe any trauma to the blood vessels or any toxic injury to the endothelial cell, any condition which causes damage to the endothelial cell or any event which causes contraction of the endothelium creating gaps between the endothelial cells leads to the escape of the fluid from the vascular compartment into the tissue compartment leads to the development of edema. Next one will be sodium as well as water retention. Here we are discussing about all the events which are responsible for the development of edema. Sodium and water retention causes increase in the plasma volume, right? Whenever there is a decrease in the sodium excretion as well as water, sodium and water retains in the body. So there will be an increase in the extracellular fluid volume eventually leads to increase in the plasma volume. Whenever there is an increase in the plasma volume, there will be an increase in the hydrostatic pressure of the capillaries. You know what happens if there is an increase in the hydrostatic pressure of the capillaries automatically, it causes escape of the fluid from the vascular compartment into the tissue compartment. Not only that, whenever there is an increased fluid concentration in the blood, that is in the plasma, there will be a dilution of the plasma proteins, right? Because more water, less proteins because of the sodium as well as water retention. 
So dilution of the plasma proteins can be the reason responsible for decreased osmotic pressure. The decreased osmotic pressure causes escape of the fluid from the capillaries into the tissue spaces to maintain the normal osmotic pressure in the capillaries. This is one of the important phenomena what we will see in the development of edema. Like such condition is mainly seen in acute kidney injury. In acute kidney injury because kidney cannot able to perform its normal excretory function there will be an increase in the sodium as well as water retention in the body leads to the development of edema. Not only the acute kidney injury, in the conditions like uh, acute glomerular pathology like uh, acute glomerular nephritis as well as there will be an increase in the renin angiotensin aldosterone system activity. All these events causes increase in the sodium as well as water retention in the body leads to the development of edema. So all these types are the important pathogenic mechanisms responsible for the development of edema.